Andy Johnson, we are looking at one aspect of fluency, words per minute or words correct per minute. When documenting and reporting fluency scores, which should you use? Hopefully we will answer that question. It's the ability to quickly recognize words during the process of reading. It is said to free up cognitive space to enhance your ability to comprehend. Fluency also involves prosody, which and simply says that your oral reading sounds similar to how one speaks. You have the correct pauses, inflections, and we're looking at one aspect of reading fluency. Do you define and describe and document as words per minute or words correct per minute? Hopefully we'll answer that. What it is, fluency, the ability to quickly recognize words during the process of a reading, it is said to free up cognitive space so you are better able to comprehend. Fluency also involves prosody, which is when your oral reading sounds similar to how one speaks, the rate, the inflection, you pause after a sentence or idea, and you your voice goes up properly when you ask a question. That is a prosody. Now there's a correlation between fluency and comprehension. One goes up, the other goes up, but correlation does not infer causation. We don't know if more fluent readers are able to comprehend better or if you're able to comprehend because you read fluency. We don't know if one causes the other. But we do know that fluency is different from word identification. They're kind of related, but they are documented and measured differently, and that will become more apparent in just a minute. Some strategies. Wide reading is perhaps the best, immersing students in a wide variety of reading that is at their independent level and below. That means the onus is on us to make sure that students have lots of interesting and engaging things to read in classroom and school libraries. Scaffolded oral reading, providing just a, a, a verbal scaffold, reading one-on-one -on -one with students, similar to the neurological impress method, where you're reading just at or slightly ahead of students, providing cues to the least extent possible. Choral reading, where you read together in small group, uh, and again, at or slightly above a student's comfortable reading pace to make sure that they keep it moving. Echo reading, you read a sentence, they read it back, and repeated reading. We'll look at that now. There are a variety of forms of a repeated reading, but it involves reading the same text or passage one or two or even three times. It involves timed reading activities. Two of them are words per minute, where you see how many words you can read in one minute, and you do that two or three times. Short passage fluency, where you have a 30, 40, or 50 word passage. Students read three times and see their times go down. Repeated reading should be one part, un, of a total reading class or intervention. One small part, and I would say, if you're doing it daily, three to eight minutes a day. If you're doing it weekly, five to ten minutes a day. But it's simply one part as needed. Now, why does it work? From the neurological perspective, we are strengthening neural pathways, expanding neural networks, so students are able to process words and letter patterns microseconds faster every time. It may work because they are simply being exposed to more print. Two and three and four times we know that wide reading is correlated with word identification, comprehension, vocabulary, a bunch of other stuff. Or self-efficacy. We know emotions Affect affects learning. Students are able to, in repeated reading, see themselves getting better each time. They see their times getting better. They know that if I practice, I can actually improve self-efficacy. Now, words per minute versus words correct per minute. Which one should you use? Know that any of these scores are estimates. When you say words per minute at the third grade level, 45 words per minute at the third grade level, Fluency rates are affected by all those things. So it's not a constant, even if the passage is norm reference. Words per minute, how many words can they read in one minute? Words correct, how many words can they read correctly in one minute? That means you look at a passage 
And for every word that they miscue or get incorrect, you do not count that as a word read. Now, I recommend you use words per minute as a fluency score because we are concerned here with only rate, only how fast they're able to process words and letter patterns. There's other places and other ways to assess word identification and comprehension. The running record, the miscue analysis, the story retelling chart. These focus on word identification and story retelling on comprehension. So in repeated reading, we are not concerned about word identification. There's other places, other ways to do that or comprehension, just rate. We want to see that getting better. Well, what happens if students just say anything? If they use just nonsense words, and they very rarely do, I have never encountered this. By the way, you're reading, student miscues or makes a mistake. During the pause, you review those words, and then the second time, they're less apt to miscue or mistake those words, stumble words. Nonsense words tax short-term memory and slows it down anyway. As well, if they have to dig into long-term memory and attach a word into a sentence, uh, you know, they pause, they don't know what it is, they have to find a word, that too is going to slow it down. So that's why we are concerned only with rate, words per minute. Repeated reading scores use words per minute versus words correct per minute.